Previously on One Piece, Luffy finally revealed his dream to his crewmate. Some of them laughed in disbelief, others thought it was impossible, some stayed silent. But ultimately, several of them felt it was just the right kind of dream that Luffy would have. Maybe we'll find out what it is one day. We also discovered that Sabo had been separated from the revolutionaries when they attacked Mary Joa, and he admits that he was framed for the murder of King Cobra, something that Luffy was, of course, in disbelief of. But, as Sabo tries to reveal to the rest of the revolutionaries that he saw Eam, the king who sits upon the empty throne, which should signify that there is no true one ruler of the world, something destroyed the island that he was on, an island the revolutionaries had previously f freed, and the marines declared, that island never existed. What destroyed the island? Is Sabo truly gone? Or did he escape somehow? And what is the next destination of Luffy and his crew? As they have entered into frozen waters and have come upon none other than another member of the worst generation, Jewelry Bonnie. Join me as I find out what happens next, won't you? Alright, One Piece Chapter 1061, Future Island Egghead. Someone in the previous chapter was heading to Egghead Port, right? Huh, okay. And we see the Germa escaping with Caesar, who helped them out of a very bad situation. But this was a rescue mission. And we see Germa Double Sixes, ah, an emotionless excursion, volume 19. Escape, a successful rescue of Niji and Yonji. So all of the Germa have managed to get their way off. So we know that the Fishman Pirates have escaped, and so have the Germa. Looks like the Big Mom crew fully took that out. <laughs> oh, okay, wow. I saw what's on that page, dang, like something out of Jaws. Okay, so previously, while dealing with a water eddy, a giant current in the sea that popped out, Luffy and Sanji noticed that there was a girl inside of the eddy. That was Jewelry Bonnie. So Zoro cut it open, and before anyone could do anything, Chopper, who was wearing a Kasa hat from Tama, ended up being blown into the air. Luffy tried to grab a hold of him, only for him to also be blown into the air. And that's currently where we are. Luffy is holding on to Chopper, and he stretches his hand out, asking, Who's that? They just popped out of the water. And Jewelry Bonnie is just screaming her head out, and coughing because, well, she was previously in the water. Bonnie questions, Who? I'm si- Wait, there's a- Where's the monster? And Chopper's like, Wait, monster? And then Bonnie realizes, Oh no, it's still down there. The rest of the straw hats still on the ship are shot. Bonnie yells to them, Look down! But Nami, seeing what's going on, says, Oh good, they're still alive, but... Zoro just asks, Where do those guys think they're going? Frankie, asking the more pertinent question, says, The little kid's yelling about something. And Sanji makes out, Look down. What's down? And then they all look down and see a massive shark just about to consume the entirety of the sunny. Some of the straw hats scream and yell, there's something just under the surface. Ah, it's a terrifying, get us out of here. Oh, and okay. It's a robotic shark. And it says, I think it says punk on the side of it. Ooh, are we finally gonna see Dr. Vegapunk? Is it finally time? But the straw hats just barely managed to avoid the massive shark. Zoro readies his katana and questions, what is that thing? A shark? It's too big for that. And made of metal. I guess Jimbei yells out, hang on tight, we're about to hit water. Blast it, Luffy and Chopper fell into the sea. They're in trouble. Grab the helm, Frankie. Bring the ship around after us. Ah, uh, Jimbei's going in after them. Frankie says, you got it. And just as they hit the water, Frankie activates the turbine underneath the Thousand Sunny. And once it's in place, he activates Rabbit Screw. And they go racing off, but, okay, this is a fully mechanized shark. Because it locks onto the Sunny and fires out torpedoes at them, blasting the Sunny up from underneath. Frankie cries out, what was that? And the Sunny just goes flipping over. Frankie says, look, well, I think Brooke says, look out. While well, Usopp yells out, we're gonna capsize. And that's the straw hat scream. I'm guessing Sanji yells out, Robin, Nami. Oof, they're in a tough spot. Meanwhile, Jimbei, who is already proving how vital it is to have a fishman on the crew, I guess he senses what's going on as he races in to grab the 
Devil Fruit users who are all drowning. He yells out, Luffy, Chopper, don't worry, I'm here. And as he grabs all three of them, he questions, what was that explosion sound I just heard? Hang in there, you three. We're heading for the surface. And as he pops out of the water, he sees how choppy the waves are. And he comes face to face with the mechanized shirt. He says, Oof, whoa, look at this current. Not much a rudder can do in this. And as the shark opens up its maw, revealing its cannon once again, it takes Jinbei a little off guard. And it fires right upon them. He yells at a cannon. We've got to dive down to escape. Take as big a breath as you can. Luffy, Bonnie, and Chopper all breathe in as much as they can. And Jinbei yells out, here it goes. And he dives under the sea yet again to escape the explosion. Meanwhile, the mechanized shark sees the Sunny, which is completely capsized. It is going down. Man, this would be a shitty way for the Straw Hats to die. And one of the Straw Hats says, the current's so, f well, they think. The current's so fast, we can't surface. And the shark, seeing that they're prone, gets ready to go in and devour them. Ah. And then a robot appears next to the shark. It says, Vega Force 1, okay. So we're definitely gonna see some Vegapunk people. Ooh, maybe G uh, Frankie will get an upgrade. And the robot is just behind the shark who freaks out. And the robot just decks the shark something awful. I think just destroying it, too. And I think Zoro is still conscious and he sees everything going on. As we see, Zoro is hanging on to Brooke. Well, I think Sanji is hanging on to Robin. That would make sense. We also see Usopp and Nami in the drink as Usopp just loses consciousness. Oh, hey, it's the kids! Okay, next page. On, at a nearby island, Naval Branch G14. We pick up with Navy HQ Captain Tashigi. As she says to the kids, it's time for your medicine, kids. You can do it. And it's all the kids from Punk Hazard who we haven't seen in a long time. And all the kids say, okay, but I'm only drinking this because you said to Tashigi. Gross. Ugh. And Mocha says, I think I've shrunk a little so far. And Tachigi says, You have? I hardly recognize you, Mocha. Whoa. Ooh. Hello. Punk Queen over here. Navy HQ G14 Base Commander Vice Admiral Doll. And she's a doll, alright. Hello. And I think she has tattoos on her arm, too. Nice. She comes up and says, Tashigi, do you have a minute? I'm getting real sick of that Helmetto kid. Can you do something about him? Tashigi says, I'm afraid I can't blame him. His best friend's safety is in question, and Captain Kobe is a valued officer who came up after me. Uh, okay, so they're discussing what to do about Kobe who's been kidnapped. And we have uh, Navy HQ, Lieutenant Commander and Sword Member Helmetto, as well as Navy HQ Commander and Sword Member Hibari, okay, another member of S.W.O.R.D. So, okay, I think this probably, it, we haven't had it labeled that Tashigi is part of S.W.O.R.D., but I wouldn't be surprised if Smoker is also a member of S.W.O.R.D. if they're also here. And Hamepo and Hibari are on their knees begging the other members of S.W.O.R.D. Hamepo says, please guys, we're supposed to be comrades. Hibari says, I'm begging you too, sir. Captain Kobe's done so much for me. And they're pleading to Navy HQ Rear Admiral and sword member, sword member Prince Gruss. Huh, Prince Gruss. Interesting. Hibari says, you gotta go with us to Pirate Island. We need this, your highness. And Hamepo says, please, your highness. So is he actually a prince? A prince who's also a Navy Admiral. A Rear Admiral, anyway. That's pretty cool. Gruss says, Yeah, but you're talking about Pirate Island. Blackbeard's hideout. The place is crawling with so many pirates. Every surface is pockmarked pock from the constant shout shootout. Oh, that's why it's called Full of Lead. Or Beehive. Oh, they even say, That's why it's called Full of Lead. I said that without even knowing that was the next line. I guess I might have seen it out of the corner of my eye and it just seeped into my mind. That's pretty cool. So it really is called Full of Lead because of all the shootouts that happen. And Helmeppo still crying and sobbing. I love how much Helmeppo cares about Kobe. Helmeppo says, But we're so close to Egghead. We could take the Seraphim. And Gruss says, Have you lost your mind? Take a step back and reassess. We don't even have contact with Drake at this point. There's nothing we can do. Get it through your heads. Huh. You know what? I was thinking about that for a bit here and there. What happened to Drake and... 
did Hawkins really die? Because that's the thing about Wano. There's so many things that just are left lingering. What happened to Drake? I'm still wondering what happened to Garrett. Did she actually take the job? I was hoping she was stowing away with the straw hats, but it got none of that, so... What can you do? But there's just a lot of loose ends after the end of Wano. Uh, did any of the beast pirate Toby Ropo manage to escape? Like, there's just so many questions. Ooh, hello fan service. <laughs> Team Luffy, we've already been divided. We pick up with Luffy, Bonnie, Jinbei, and Chopper in a cave at a nearby island. Where Bonnie says, do you seriously not know who I am? We're both part of the worst generation. Oh, only... Zoro even met Bonnie, so I'm not surprised Zoro, uh, Luffy doesn't know who she is. Bonnie says, our names have been associated this whole time. I was there in Sabote two years ago. And Luffy just says, oh, so you're the worst too, huh? <laughs> Luffy, not like that. As Bonnie has just taken off her top and is wringing out her uh, shirt. Mm, damn. Bonnie says, I'm Bonnie. And just to be clear, we're enemies. But thanks for saving. <laughs> and Luffy just laughs and says, No prob, Boggy. Oh, well, we'll see if he remembers her name after, I guess, this side adventure. And Luffy's just wringing out his shirt. And I think he's slapping Chopper with it, saying, Dad, that's cold. And Bonnie looks over at them just playing around and says, These guys... Is it supposed to be an emperor? This guy is supposed to be an emperor? And Bonnie asks the million dollar question as she continues to wring out her shirt. What's up with your bounty poster? With your hair all white? The papers were making a big deal over you. And Luffy just says, oh, that's what I look like when I'm free. And Bonnie just asks, what does that mean? And what happened to your crew? And Luffy just says, heh, eh, they're fine. They're fine, I bet. <laughs> and then Bonnie says, I can't believe you have Jimbei, first son of the sea. Like most members of the worst generation, there's always that moment of, I can't believe you have this, I can't believe this, I can't believe that. Meanwhile, Jimbei, ever pragmatic questions, and what about your cr your ship and crew? Bonnie, as she unfortunately puts back on her shirt and adjusts herself, says, I came here alone, that metal monster ate my ship. Speaking of eating, I'm hungry. And Luffy, ha, finally being like, oh yeah, hungry, that's what I am too. God, between the two of them, they'd clean out an entire country. Luffy says, let's look for a restaurant, I'm starving too. And Chopper, obviously also hungry, says, do you have any money, Luffy? But Bonnie chews him out saying, no, you ignorant fools, there's no restaurants here. This is a government island, let me explain. <laughs> that's all she's doing at this point. It's called Egghead. Okay, so they're at the... I guess this is a location for Vegapunk. A place 500 years in the future, they say. Literally or figuratively? The island that houses Dr. Vegapunk's laboratory. And Luffy says, Vegapunk? Hey, I know that name. And Body says, yeah, and I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Ooh. Yeah, about Kuma. Are we gonna finally find out Bonnie's association to Kuma? Ooh, I see. The giant robot who beat up the shark before picked up the Thousand Sunny. I wonder if Dr. Vegapunk is on board. Huh, seems like, okay, it's some chick. Okay, Frankie sees the robot and he's just enamored and so is Usopp as they yell out, G -g 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 giant robot! Nami, Zoro, and Robin are all uh, warrior prepared. Caribou is there. And Brooke notices someone coming out of the uh, cockpit? Wherever that's located. And the person, obviously female, says, hmm, no good. Another failure. Blast it. Why isn't it possible to control the urges of living creatures? Sanji says, look, someone popped out. The girl says, well, drat. Frankie says, I don't know who that is, but thanks for saving us, whoever you are. The girl says, the only things I ordered the mecha shark to do were recon, report, and bombard. Oh, bombard. Don't want it to eat anything because no valuables are left behind. An error in programming, I suppose. Oh, and she takes off her helmet and says, Now, just a moment, you filthy pirates. Who said anything about saving you? I'm just a humble genius scientist hired by the government. An assistant? You can call me Dr. Vegapunk. <laughs> and, of course, they respond, huh? Hmm, Vegapunk. Whoa. Hmm, hmm, Vegapunk. And her suit says Punk Zero Two. She looks very young. Huh. This could mean any number of possibilities. Either this is Vegapunk's daughter or granddaughter. That's a possibility. 
which is why she'd be called Dr. Vegapunk, still have the same last name. It's just like, I'm Dr. Vegapunk, my grandfather's Dr. Vegapunk, my grand, my father's 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 father is Dr. Vegapunk. It's a prestigious line kind of situation. That's entirely possible. A long line of super geniuses. Or this could be Vegapunk in an android body. Maybe he's been transferring his consciousness into other people's bodies. Maybe he created this body. Maybe he's just a brain putting his mind into other people's bodies. Maybe it's a clone gone wrong like X-23 and Wolverine. Huh. Well, maybe it is Dr. Vegapunk who's just modified himself, well, herself over the years. I could have sworn the only time we actually saw a depiction of Vegapunk, it was kind of portrayed as male. I wonder. Now that I think about it, we didn't even get to see uh, the hometowns and everybody react to what's going on with them, so it feels like we just blitz right into the next arc we didn't even have the welcoming thing for jimbei uh, that was kind of a bummer uh, i mean i don't want oda to just speed blitz through everyone but this is fascinating i don't know why i'm not as excited because it's just like it it doesn't feel i don't know if this is the real dr vegapunk though that's the thing like holy shit it's dr fucking vegapunk but is it that's the thing hmm and we're on break next week. God damn. Okay. See, I'm not I I'm not excited, unfortunately. I'm more frustrated because I'm just like, is this really Dr. Vegapunk? Because if it is, holy shit. But it's potentially not. And we still don't know Vegapunk's motives and everything. I mean, to be meeting the Straw Hats so early on, and is it possible Vegapunk and Frankie will bond? Frankie's taking a lot of inspiration from Vegapunk. I mean, I'm not sure how this is gonna go, because it's also that feeling of, okay, should we be wary? Should we be fearful? Especially with the Seraphim, that was kind of messed up. And what Vegapunk did to Kuma, it's like, ugh, should I be happy we're meeting Vegapunk? Especially with the filthy pirates line. I don't know. I don't know. But hey, our adventure with Jewelry Bonnie has begun. Tell me your thoughts in the comments section below. Is Vegapunk the ultimate enemy of all of this? What happened to Colby? Will Hamepo get Vegapunk's assistance in all of this? Or is all not what it seems? Do we expect another adversary coming up? Let me know your thoughts. But until next time, I've been Deuce this in. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.